Welcome back to Girls Next Level, everybody. We have a very special guest today. We have Tiffany Lang. She was the gorgeous painted lady at some of the parties that we've talked about several times, and we're super excited to get her perspective of what it was like working as a painted lady at the mansion parties and just going to the mansion in the 2000s and all the good stuff. So welcome, Tiffany. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. We're so excited to talk to you again. It's been so long. Likewise. I know. I hear the 2000s and I think like that was just, you know, last week and it's definitely 20 years ago. So yeah. I know. It's so crazy how it sneaks up on you. And for those of you who aren't watching this on Patreon, Tiffany looks just as gorgeous as ever. Like no time has passed. Oh, you are too kind. You are too kind. <laughs> you are too kind. But you're blonder. I'm blonder. Oddly enough, I'm blonder. I know. We're all like matching tone right now. We are. Tiffany, uh, tell everybody and us, because I don't even think I know the answer to these questions, like where you're from originally, where you grew up, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I'm originally from San Diego, uh, born and raised and um, was down there, went to high school, went to part of college. Um, and I'm the oldest of four, uh, siblings and yeah, just grew up, had a, had a great childhood, had a blast. Um, and then started to, I, I did a pageant. I did a Miss Rancho Bernardo pageant, got Miss Photogenic and then started to get into like modeling through that, which was really strange. Um, and yeah, and that's kind of how it progressed back in the back in the 2000s, um, there was a lot of like car modeling happening. I don't know if you guys remember. I remember that. I was on the cover of Low Rider once. Yeah, same girl, same. Yeah, it was like low, it was like all the car magazines and um, did that, would go to events like SEMA and do all the like the promotional modeling side of things representing like brands. Um, like tire companies and all that. And then, um, yeah, it just kind of like, I think I like fell into modeling by accident because I was like, oh, this is never going to be a thing. And I just kept going and kept going. And um, as long as you like show up on time and you're professional, I feel like in it, it just kind of continues to um, gain momentum. So that's what happened. Yeah. That kind of timeline, um, com uh, remember MySpace, you guys? So MySpace was like the thing back then. And that's how you would kind of promote yourself. And so I did like events and appearances through MySpace. I was like one of the top 10 viewed girls on MySpace. I used to host parties with DJ AM and like LA and Vegas and that's actually how Playboy discovered me was online. That was our next question. Like when were you, when were you first aware of Playboy or did they kind of like come to you first? Yeah. So um, they had reached out to a manager of mine um, and uh, asked about a cyber playmate type thing. So it was like a, referred to as a cyber girl. I think it was August, 2003. Um, and had me go and test and I was hoping it would be parlayed into like bigger things because I, I love Playboy. I've always loved Playboy. Um, I think women's bodies are works of art and like all the women in the magazine were just and, uh, stunning, like drop dead gorgeous. And so that way I was like, yep, heck yes, let's do it. Um, um, but yeah, that, that's kind of how it, it took off. And then, um, yeah, the, the body painting thing and all that happened. So I tested and the body painter, Mark Frazier, um, he had been in contact. He had somehow seen pictures or somehow, or my, my agent had reached out or my manager, um, some kind of conversation that happened behind the scenes that I wasn't privy to. Um, but I guess they sent pictures in. And they were like, oh, you want to be painted for the mansion parties? I think it was the 50th anniversary party was the first one that I was painted for. Oh, yeah. And that one was televised. So did they tell you, because you're going to be nude but painted, did they 
make you sign a release? Did they tell you where all the footage was going? No. Oh my God. That's shocking. Like I know they have the signs around the property when the parties were going on, like by being on property, you consent to being filmed, but it's crazy to me that they don't tell people that they're hiring to be naked here. You need to sign a release. And this is where the footage could end up. Like that's crazy to me. I think like what happens when you first test is you sign some kind of omni release where they just, not that they own you as a human after that, but I think like any kind of images or anything that you do, any kind of events that you do after that, I think that's probably how it works, but I don't know. Like I definitely didn't know there was going to be film crews and then I didn't really know like what they were for either. Like I thought internal. Um, so yeah. It's, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Tell us about your cyber girl shoot. What was that like? Yeah. Um, so I was 19. Um, so I was 19 and um, they had me wear like stiletto red heels and really played into like the student aspect. We did the scene was shot um, in a museum kind of mock-up with a bunch of art pieces and sculptures. And I was in like, um, uh, pr pretty much nothing, um, but like gingham, uh, you know, lingerie and it was really cute. I did another, um, another shot in like, an, uh, you know, the, the flag, um, that was like cut off. And so it was very like all American girl, uh, vibes like a hundred percent fluffy hair bit, like the whole thing <laughs> were you nervous um I wasn't oddly enough I I think I've just been confident like again I I think uh we're born naked and uh, there's nothing wrong with being naked and so I've never been shy I've never felt like there was anything wrong with it I wasn't I I was a little bit, I guess, a little, little bit nervous because of where I was shooting. Um, but I'd been doing it for, for years before that. So it was just more exciting than anything, I think. Did you shoot it in LA? Yeah. When did you meet Mark Frazier for the first time? I met him for the first time. He was painting on my naked body. <laughs> yeah, they, I guess they look at your picture and they pick you for certain I don't want to say outfits because it's not an outfit, um, but they pick you for certain things. And I had been slated for like a tuxedo with the 50, you know, on my back and rhinestones with the bunny, which was super cool. Uh, and then they had changed it at the last second. So it was something, yeah, something else. I did, I, you guys, I've been painted like literally everything, like a French maid, a showgirl, killed like every everything. So yeah, that's when I met him. And he said I was really easy to paint on. I don't know why. You must have good skin quality. Okay, there we go. Um, he's like, you're really symmetrical and you're easy to paint on. So do you want to come back and do another one and another one? And another? so he just kind of kept booking me. Do you mind me asking? I'm curious. Um how much you get paid for something like that? Yeah. So we got, in the beginning, I got $500 every time I was painted. Um, so 20 years ago, it wasn't that bad. And I looked at it like I was getting paid to, to party at the Playboy Mansion. So that was pretty good. Was it a really long day? Like what time did you have to get there? And how long did that process take? Some of them would take, oh gosh, like four or five hours. Um, especially the ones where you were covered in like crystals or gems. So Cause they had to individually glue each one to your body. Yeah. They didn't have them on, like, on a sheet that they just put on. It was one by one. And they would have to even paint the pinpoints prior, like a pattern and then glue them on the pattern. Yeah. So it was, it was a long day. We were down, we were down in the gym all the time. <laughs> Did, do you know, did Hef have any say in who became the Painted Ladies? I was told he had to approve everyone, and, but he didn't see us in person. Um, just, just, you know, pictures. But this was back when you couldn't Photoshop things and put filters on things. So our pictures were really what we looked like for the most part. So, um, yeah. <laughs> 
What was the group like of Pain and Ladies? I mean, I know it changes pretty much every time, but did everybody get along? Were they friendly or was it catty? Or what, like, what what was it like? Yeah, I think there was a core group of us that kept, um, like, getting rebooked. So Mark would ask me eventually, like, hey, who are some other girls that you know? Are there any, you know... Cause they have to be, they have to be cute and they have to be well-mannered and poised. Um, and I brought in, uh, Mickey Black, one of my girlfriends that I used to shoot trashy lingerie with. I brought in, um, Jennifer Chung, um, who was there all the time. So I brought in a couple, but then the rest would be just booked by Mark Frazier and those would be kind of on a rotation. Um, and we would kind of be the, the staple ones there for, quite a few years I think so you your job is to pass out jello shots and dance and dance because mm-hmm. I was going to ask what other things did you have to do or did you do yeah so we would be on a I forget the name of who was our late keeper um but she would have us all um take turns greeting guests at the door with jello shots and taking pictures and we were in like the party section of the magazine a lot um and then we would have to go up on this there was the that dance floor the checkered dance floor and then on the stage on the left and the right there was like kind of little spots for like go-go dancing essentially so we would go on a rotation and dance on stage and then they would switch us out and we had like scheduled times to eat we had scheduled times to um schmooze and we'd be off at a like I don't know, like midnight or so, or maybe a little bit earlier, but then we could like enjoy the party and and talk and hang out. When's the first time you met Hef? Um, The first time I met Hef, I think was at the first body painting of, I think was at the 50th. I don't think I really spent a lot of time um, talking, talking to him. Um, But I did talk more um, when I knew I knew Kendra from San Diego so she was one of the ones that I they brought in to get painted um so I did talk with him more when they started talking as well well that was my next question how did you meet Kendra and how did she get referred to the body painting yeah I met her doing uh same thing like promo modeling catalogs I think we were doing oh gosh it was like dirt bike gear or some kind of catalog for that we were shooting it and we're both from San Diego uh, local models and then I was like hey like I do paint, body painting up at the Playboy Mansion like who's gonna say no to that also I'm like you want to come and she was like yeah um so um she was one of the ones that I referred to Mark Frazier and and so how when you when you work this party how or any party really um how do you get to the mansion and home from the mansion I would either drive um drive and then the valet would take your car and it would just disappear and you'd be there and then they would drop it off to you afterwards but I I'm a huge fan of never drinking and driving so um eventually when I would know I had to do stuff after the parties or had somewhere to go or wanted to go just hang out in LA with my friends I would have people sometimes like drop me off and pick me up um, and that would blow people's minds too. They're like, can I pick you up? Can I pick you up so I can drive onto the branches? Just like gobsmacked. <laughs> what time would you say you usually got off? I know you said that most of the, the jello shot stuff was done like around midnight or so, but what time did you usually like leave the parties? Oh, like two, three. Every party was different. There were some, like my favorites personally were the Halloween parties and the Midsummer Night Stream. Those were like magical. Um, So I would stay at those like super late. But if it was New Year's Eve or something when there's like a million other parties going on, I would would tend to to hop out and go. Yeah, everybody peaced out at New Year's Eve. Well, you you know, it's like a small, it's a small world. LA is really teeny tiny. Um, So there'd be like, yeah, quite literally like 20 other parties. I was like, come on. So, well, I know Holly has a burning question about being painted. How do you go to the bathroom? Oh, very carefully. You squat and make sure nothing is touching anything. Oh my gosh. So, I guess it was um, the paint was so water based. Um, so, what didn't have any kind of like it wasn't oily or it wasn't like a like a painting that you paint that you could touch and it would smear. It was like fully dried. 
Um, so once we were dried, like we would sit down, I don't know, you guys remember going down there with the humongous fans, we'd be sitting in front of the fans. Mm -hmm. dry. Once it was dried, it was actually really hard to get off, like really hard. So, cause I was so concerned in the beginning that, yeah, I would like smudge it or mess it up. Um, but yeah, like I would have that stuff on for like days sometimes and couldn't get it off. So. Did you guys have tricks to taking it off? Because I got painted a couple of times, like all blue one year and stuff. And it was so hard. Like I was in the bath just scrubbing and baby oil, they say to use. And it just was like, this is not coming off. Did, but did you guys have tricks? That that was it. We would just soak um, and baby oil and anything kind of oil based. But it was like, it was hard. Like <laughs> it was back when like tanning too was super popular. So I'd have like fake tans on and be scrubbing them off and be repainted. And I would do like, not just the Playboy parties, I would do other parties. So I would get painted sometimes like three, four times a week. What other parties were doing painted ladies? Yeah. So there was, I guess you could like rent out the mansion um, and host parties there. And that list had to be super exclusive. Um, but if there was any kind of, um, like a real a movie release or a debut of something the companies would book out the mansion have their parties there and you would get I guess with the package two painted ladies one or two and I would be like yeah so I was like I, I'm a professional party favorite <laughs> so. did you feel like or was there ever a time where you're like I can't go do this next party because I still have the paint on from the last party Oh yeah. Like there was times Mark had to paint over like other paint and like change my outfit or make it like a different shape because of that a hundred percent. Yeah. And then he started painting me like more scantily clad when there were back to back ones so that he wouldn't have to, I wouldn't have a lot to get off. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. And I say scantily clad, like it's clothes. I was, yeah. <laughs> I got my clothes. It really did. Well, you know what? In some of the parties, the girls actually wore like a little tiny panty that they painted over too. Did they ever have you wear that? Nope. That was not a thing by the time I got there. Nope. Yeah. I I feel like it might have been not the mansion parties, but somewhere else where I saw people painted and they were actually wearing like a small panty. Yeah. It, there was a, so not the Playboy parties, but at the, the private events, um, I, there was a couple of times we had options to do that. Um, I think just, yeah, I think people that like the, the crowd at the Playboy mansion would always be respectful and know how to act, um, around painted ladies when, um, that, kind of wasn't the case maybe at some um some not like some rent some different parties let's just say that <laughs> did you feel pressure all day long like oh my god I can't eat anything or do the other girls have pressure like that because you're basically naked nothing to hide you can't hide anything so did you feel that pressure yeah oh 100 percent. and yeah like the day before like the, the whole day and we would see girls like pass out because they were sitting there like standing getting painted and I, I would see girls hit the floor all the time so yeah and not used to it and I'm like you gotta eat a little bit you gotta like we would all eat after the party was over and I, like at the like gorgeous like food everywhere and buffets and everything and it would be yeah yeah but until then nope <laughs> Yeah. Is it awkward having um, people painting you and they're like so close? They're like all up in your stuff. Oh, yeah. There is no like, and it was funny because Mark had his like, it was like a family thing. He had his wife painting with him and his son and his daughter. Um, and then random like people that would come in, which I don't know about them. Um, but I would usually be with um, Mark's wife or Mark. Um, but yeah, they are literally like, they can see your pores. You know what? I, I probably knew it at the time, but I kind of forgot that it was sort of a family affair till I was rewatching some of the episodes. And I think that that's kind of cool though. And sort of makes it feel a little bit less weird knowing that his wife and his kid and the whole family is kind of in on it. I don't know. It just, it's not a group of just like uh pervy guys or something. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. And he was, a, he's a really good artist. He paints and does all his other stuff to like professionally, not just on, on hot chicks, <laughs> but yeah, he does, he's very talented. Did you have a favorite one of all time? A favorite design they did on you? 
Oh, I liked the French maid. I, I like that one. I shot the magazine in that one too. Um, it, it was just so cutesy and so delicate and just, I mean, it's, it's crazy what they can do with paint, um, and make it look real. <laughs> were there ever like, uh, choices where girls were like fighting over it? Like, no, I want to be the butterfly. No, I'm going to be the butterfly. Like people getting mad about it. Yeah. Like no one wanted to be the full body paint, like the full tiger, uh, like Halloween or the full zebra or the full, just because it was, I think like less sexy. And then they painted their whole faces too. It was intense. And so, yeah, there was definitely like, if the new girls got those ones and yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh no. But, yeah. Well, that was our next question. Were there ones people didn't want to wear? <laughs> yeah, oh, huh, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. You talked about not, you guys didn't sign any kind of release really to be on film or at the parties or anything like that. So it was just the general like sign that was up that, hey, guess what? Everyone's being filmed. Yeah. I would love to see all that footage, by the way. I would let, like, I don't know where that lives, but that would be cool to watch all the footage. <laughs> Do you mean like just the party footage? Like when John Collado was walking around? Yeah. Yeah, we used to watch it like the next morning. We'd ask him to run it through the TV. Like we'd gather in Bridget's room and just die laughing, watching it like what he caught. And I still, I do have like DVDs still. They'd give us copies. I, you know what? I never thought about it before, but like it's really cool that we have DVDs of the parties like that. Oh my gosh, I need those. <laughs> yeah, maybe we do a watch party or something. <laughs> Yeah, better than Netflix and chill. Like, that would be far more entertaining. <laughs> I bet there's some funny shit on there that I don't even remember. For sure. And people that we forgot all about. And just the next question is kind of similar to those, but we were curious, were you ever just surprised to see video of yourself as a painting lady on, like, Girls Next Door? Yeah, I knew they were filming. Um, so, um, and, and again, like, I, I've never been shy about any kind of nudity, so I I, I, I didn't care too much. Um, I didn't care till later, I guess. I don't know. I feel like I'm in the professional, I'm in the corporate America world now, and definitely I've gotten judged a couple of times for my past. And so maybe that component of it, like the later on in impact in life, um, but I didn't... I didn't care too much. I was, I was surprised. I was always surprised to see little snippets of what they chose to show um, in just any show on Playboy. But yeah, I'm, I'm okay with it. I just, yeah, some people, some people are not. Yeah, I just think it would have been more professional of them to let everybody know. So at least you're like making an informed decision because we didn't even know as main characters like, we just assumed, oh, it's on E, so everything's going to be blurred. Let me walk around the backyard naked. And it's not like it's the biggest deal because it's not like, you know, obviously I posed for the magazine. So it's not like the biggest deal. But I think I would have been, like, a shade more careful about just, like, my angles and, like, what I was doing if I would have known it would have been unblurred on the DVD, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Like, the top half is one thing, but, like, everything else is, like, that's, you assume there's going to be some tactful editing to it and just with like a, a, a hope and faith, but yeah. Yeah. It's exactly what I was just going to say. Like, I don't have a problem with nudity at all and I'm totally fine with it. But when you do something and you think that, well, it's for E, so it's going to be blurred and you, you think that going into it. And now here I am watching the DVDs and they're uncut and unblurred and all over the world, they're uncut and unblurred. And it's like, whoa, I didn't, I didn't have a problem being new, but I also didn't know it was going to be like worldwide nakedness and at people's just demand whenever they wanted it. Yeah. And I had, I had no idea until recently too. Like I didn't even pay attention to it and, and looking up all this stuff again. And I'm like, whoa. Okie dokie. <laughs> so tell us about working Hef's 78th birthday party because that is really the first party that we remember meeting you and um, and Kendra, of course. Yeah. Um, same, same thing. Get painted. Get your hair and makeup done. Um, went up. Did the jello shots. And um, I know that I think Hef came down 
um, that time when we were getting painted. And so we came down to say hi to everyone. We came down to say hi too, but I don't remember if it was with Hef or by ourselves. I don't remember either. What was Kendra's uh, state of mind like going into the party and doing all of that? Like, was she super excited? Was she nervous? Did she, was she like, I'm going to meet Hef tonight? Or was she like, I want to meet celebrities? Like, what was her kind of demeanor? All of it. <laughs> all of it. Um, yeah, like super nervous, super excited to meet celebrities. Like, who is it, right? Really? And we're like, oh my gosh, famous people in real life. Um, but yeah, um, it was definitely, she she was super nervous. And which was funny because she's like a tougher character, but super nervous. And then that same weekend, or maybe it was the next weekend, but still like really within a short time frame, you guys came and worked the Kill Bill party. Yes. So she was a nurse, I think, and they put her in a nurse's outfit and like actual real like orthopedic shoes. <laughs> That's such an interesting choice. I'm sitting here in like the clear high heels and then we're in orthopedic shoes and like white tights, which are not like full pantyhose. Um, and sure, they were serving shots in test tubes, I think, as part of the, the Kill Bill, the, if you've seen the movie, um, you know, that character. And then I was painted as Uma Thurman. So in the yellow jumpsuit, I had a wig for that one, like a short blonde platinum wig. And I was, they started painting me and then brought me out to the party. And then Mark was finishing painting me live at the party for that one. I feel like that party was the coolest backyard rental party out of any of them. I just remember we really wanted to go out there because we saw the playmates working the party. We're wearing these really cool like yellow long sleeve Kill Bill t-shirts and we wanted the t-shirts and we went out there and we saw you guys too, talk to you guys and they had like a cake shaped like the pussy wagon, the truck from the movie. And it was just like, it was a cool vibe. It was definitely, I think the coolest backyard rental party out of all of them. Oh, it was like epic. That was super fun. And everyone was in a great mood. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. I know because I had to forget how old I was, but 20, 20, 21, I had to like Quentin Tarantino body painting because he ended up body painting on me too. He was like, I want to do that. And I was like, this is so cool. Um, Cause I, I loved his movies. So it was just random. Like, and I had, it, it's so funny. I hadn't seen the movie. I didn't know what it was about till I, after, and I was like, Oh my gosh, that was like, okay. <laughs> but I, didn't. I mean, that is so cool. What a mind blowing experience to like be at the party and then actually have Quentin Tarantino painting you. Yeah, the, the body painting, people are quite fond of it. <laughs> so during this time frame, you probably weren't aware of it, or maybe you were, you could tell us, but I would assume you weren't. Um, during like Hef 78th birthday and that party and everything, uh, we were obviously have girlfriends and there was like, I think there were six of us at that time. And it was very um, contentious and very, <laughs> a lot of drama, a lot of drama going on. And I was just curious as an outsider like that, were you aware of any of that? And did the uh, other girls try to like talk to you guys or like bring you in in any way or anything like that? Yeah, I wasn't aware um, of any any drama. So you guys carried yourselves with class and elegance because I had no idea. And I was just always like, I think just so intimidated, but you guys are just, and you still are stunning, um, beautiful and poised. And I was like, ah. Um, but yeah, like all the, it was, I mean, quite a thing to see, you know, Hugh Hefner walking down with like beautiful blondes and yeah, I didn't, I didn't see from the outside, um, inside, outside, a little bit inside, um, but I didn't see anything. Um, so, but I did get asked, like it was at the Kill Bill party, actually. I did get asked, I, I don't, I forget which girlfriend it was, not you guys, um, but I got asked to, like, or, or suggested to, hey, like, you should maybe go platinum. Like, this is a good look on you. Hey, do you want to like come over here and sit over here? Like they were, um, they were having discussions. So me. <laughs> interesting, like trying to get you to become like one of the, or at least come out with us or something. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I, and I went out, um, I went out with you guys a lot just because I, Kendra and, you know, after the, if I was getting painted at the mansion, um, and the, the rental parties would be done earlier and they'd be, I'd be done at like 10 and I think I would go out. I don't know what we, we, I went out because like quite a few times. I don't know what time we go out. I think like 10. No, we wanted you to come out with us because we liked you and Kendra. We thought you were really nice. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I was like, they felt bad for me, so they're inviting me out. <laughs> no, not at all. We were like, she's so pretty. In fact, I was watching, we were talking about it on the podcast, I was watching, you know, the show, and I was like, why was Tiffany never a playmate? She's so pretty. Oh, I, I see. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I, like, pushed the issue. I think there's just so many blondes trying out that they just have, like, their hands full. Yeah, a hundred percent. And it would, I would have much rather had the, well, I don't know how to, how to compare it to a playmate experience, but I had a really good time being body painted and seeing all the parties and seeing, it was, it was a cool, unique way to like come out to people and like get to talk to them and like meet people I wouldn't usually meet. So it was, it was good. It was a good path. It's kind of like you get to be part of the Playboy family, but without all the rules of not only I mean, forget being a girlfriend because that's a whole other set of rules but like even the playmates have their own set of rules and con you know conduct that they have to do but like paying the lady is even like a step below that like you just not I don't, I don't mean I mean it below but you know what I mean like as far as rules go you don't have to have all of these I, mean, I know there was rules they want you to be well behaved and be on time and that kind of stuff but as far as like socializing and and going out afterwards and but still being part of the playboy family and stuff like you get you get kind of the best of all worlds yeah, like I could, I could leave whenever, like I could go and do the party and leave and come back and have a, like a, yeah. So I, I totally get what you mean. Yeah. And the, and like I said, the, I forget her name again. I need to remember who used to be like in charge of us, but eventually like, I don't even think she needed to do that anymore just because we were there in the same set of girls, you know, kind of looking out for the other girls eventually. So how does it go from you're a pain and lady, you talk to Hef a little bit, but then you're like coming out with us. Like how, how did that happen for you? Did Hef call you? Did somebody else call you? I can't, I can't remember exactly. Hef definitely called me um, and, and invited me out. And then it was um, a lot of Kendra, like, hey, come out with us. And I always, like I just said earlier, I, I, I kind of thought it was because I was just there and being painted and they were like, oh, like bring her out. We feel bad. Like, you know, no, to be honest, you know, there was so much infighting within the group and Holly and I wanted like fun people to come out with us, like no expectations or anything like that. Just like, can we just like break up this like negativity that's going on with having some fun, positive people that just want to have a good time, like come out with us. So we were like so excited when you and Kendra were coming out. Like it was a breath of fresh air for us. It was so fun. Like, I mean, we went to like the best clubs, like the most exclusive things and events and like danced all night um like all all night so it I just I love having fun and going out and dancing and doing all that we actually so much so I think I was telling you about this we actually so much so like we're goofballs that we even got in trouble at the mansion one time me and Mickey were so it was the only time, the one and only time I got in trouble, we we were we were taking jello shots and we were like, this seems like a really good idea. We're like, let's have a dance off. But like on the stage and we started doing like the robot and the sprinkler and being just like goofballs and passing moves back and forth. And then it must so it must have been Jenny and she goes, You guys knock it off. That's not sexy enough. I was like, oh. I'm like, but it's funny. And we're literally party favors, but okay, I'll stop. What would you say? I mean, I feel like this qualifies as that, but what would you say is some of your most memorable experiences? Oh yeah, for sure that. And then I met a guy I dated from a, that was in a band. I met him there on a Halloween party. Uh, I dated him for a couple years. That was really memorable. Just the the friendships too. I'm still friends with Mickey, Jenna. We're all like, yeah, we're all out of the modeling thing now. And like, but we have great memories and the specific ones. I mean, my first Midsummer Night's Dream, just to walk in and they, I'm sure you guys have just described this before, but just, to, I mean, they literally hung like Frasia and fresh flowers everywhere. And it, 
it like smelled like Midsummer Night's Dream. Like it was just stunning. And so I think all of them um, in the beginning, right, were like epically done. I mean, they're exquisite parties. So I couldn't really pick like a favorite favorite, but a lot of cool stuff happened. I had I had some some memorable experiences for sure. What made you stop coming out with us? Because I remember like we were always asking for you and stuff and then like just suddenly like kind of weren't coming out anymore. Was it because you met somebody or? Yeah. So um, I think Hef what so I think Hef wanted me to, to kind of be participating in the girlfriend stuff. And um, I, I said no a couple times. But I said no kind of definitively one time, and I feel like I just kind of stepped back because I felt like, um, I don't know, I felt like that was maybe what was like the purpose and intent of having me come out was like, oh, okay, if you're not going to be a girlfriend, bye then. Um, And maybe this is like a lot of assumptions in my head, but I... I definitively said no. And I was, I was always like kind of dating, you know, off and on there, which hats off to the guys I've dated. Cause I don't know how any guy could date somebody who would literally be walking around naked for their job. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, I think that that was, that was why, like, I, I think I didn't go all in and kind of shrunk back from it. So yeah. Bummer. <laughs> Well, because we enjoyed we enjoyed having you come out and stuff, and then all of a sudden it was kind of like, "Where's Tiffany? How come she doesn't want to come out with us anymore?" You know. I did. I I did. Maybe I should. Maybe it was a lot of miscommunication. And then, um, yeah. And I think too, like my like connection was mostly like Kendra, and I think Kendra started getting, um, not too cool for school, but kind of, um, and kind of, kind of drawing away from the relationship with me a little bit and getting more into the show and more into, you know, celebrity thing. And, you know, it was just like, I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to exit gracefully. Honestly, that was the impression that I had. I felt, I felt like that there was a division going on there and that was the problem. That's more the reason why I was like, no. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And, and it was, I think it was like Mickey or somebody else. Like we, I, I, I saw her at events afterwards and she wouldn't really say hi anymore, which was funny. Cause I'm like, definitely got, got you painted, but it's okay. I understand like life happens. So yeah. Yeah. Were there ever any inappropriate things that happened to you while you were working as a painted lady? There, no, not really. There was the parties, there was one party like scene, um, and I don't know even know what to call it, like an organization, I don't know, Candyland. There was this like, um, they would run out the mansion like frequently. And I feel like they would like sell tickets to people that had no business being at the Playboy Mansion. So they were just like, people would come up and like try to fake snap my lingerie and like do all that. Oh God, douchey. Yeah, but then like stay touchy, and no, <laughs> like no. Yeah, yeah. I feel like at Hef's personal parties that he threw, the guest list really understood that they couldn't misbehave like that, or they wouldn't be invited back. And yeah, and that that's exactly right. Like those felt so safe, and not the other ones. Um, yeah, I remember one that, yeah, that there was just, there was just guys that were very, some, some bros that should probably not never have been there. Um, yeah. So I chose not to work those ones anymore. The Candyland parties we even noticed, like, I think we went out to one for like two seconds with half once, but even though we didn't go to them, we even noticed from like inside the house, something felt a little sketch about it. Like they were letting like usually they would let people rent out the backyard if it was like some kind of a corporate party, but like the Candyland parties were like trying too hard to be like Hef's party, but it, and it kind of cheapened the whole thing. I felt like it was one of the first things that started to make the parties go downhill. I remember somebody from the staff was telling us that they hated doing the Candyland parties because they would, because the theme was Candyland, they would serve a lot of like sweets and candy and things like that at the buffet. So there would be all these people eating nothing but sugar all night and drinking. So people were like puking in the bushes and the staff was just like, we hate cleaning up after those parties. They're disgusting. (laughs) 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. That sounds about right. <laughs> well, and what you were saying, Holly, too, about them being like knockoff mansion parties, they were direct knockoff. It's like if Heft was going to have a Halloween party on Saturday, say October 26th, Candyland would do theirs on like Friday, October 25th. And it was like the exact same party, only different guest lists, a very different guest list. Didn't they try to use the haunted house too? Yeah. That came up as like somebody pointed out to have, you shouldn't let them book out right before your party. It's like taking away. It is taking away because a lot of, I mean, how many, I know there's a million girls in LA and stuff still, but like you want the best for your own party. Stop letting other people like take it over. I remember it being a topic a lot. The Candyland parties were also noticeably more male. Like it would be just men everywhere. That's crazy because with Hef's party, there was supposed to be, I forget what the ratio was, but it was supposed to be so many more women than men. And it was, it was so many more women than men. And then the other way around. So I was like, Oh, and then there was, so that made it worse when there was like a female around. Everyone was like, ah, mine. Yeah. People talk about girls next door being kind of like the demise and like letting too much out of uh, the playboy mystique and stuff like that. But I honestly think that it was those rental parties like that, that were like stealing Hef's ideas and trying to duplicate it and letting people bring cameras and just making it too um, tangible for too many people and not as classy. They think they're getting the Playboy Mansion experience, but they're really not. Yeah. Any other party it, that's not a Playboy party was not the same. It was, it was not. And I know because I would literally talk to every single, you guys know more than anyone, but I, I mean, I would literally talk to every single guest and yeah, just the mood, like it was palpable. And yeah, I, I can't explain it. Just that this word is safe. Like the Playboy parties were like safe. Is there like a celebrity that stands out that you met? I know you um, already talked about Quentin Tarantino. Was there anybody else where you're like, oh my God, that person was so nice or maybe the opposite? Um, I'll keep everything positive. Um, Justin Timberlake was super, super, super nice. And he was in the height of everything. And he did like he didn't have to be and he was super sweet and kind um who else I was starstruck to meet Michael Keaton of all people because I <laughs> I was like oh my gosh I like grew up watching your movies and I was like cool probably <laughs> like, um so I loved meeting him um oh gosh like Pamela Anderson Jenny McCarthy just everyone I had like just like idolized in the modeling world too um, meeting them in real life was just so cool. And everyone, again, like everyone's, it's not like a, you know, a, a promo modeling thing. Like it's not like a convention where they like have to talk to strangers. It's in like an intimate setting with their friends and it's just different. So it was very cool. Did you ever come to any of the parties as like a guest? Like, did you come out to 4th of July and just be Tiffany? Gosh, like I came to fun in the sun as just me. And uh, that was the one where, gosh, that would have been awkward being body painted in full light, daylight. Uh, <laughs> but I, I came to those a lot. And pretty much I was painted like almost every time I came as a guest before, like early, early on before maybe once. Um, but yeah, it was pretty much like they put me to work. <laughs> yeah um oh wait uh holly said that you did the red man method man and snoop dog stuff at the mansion tell us about that experience yeah oh my gosh that was funny trying to get anyone to focus yeah i think at one point all that like everyone out that was filming they were off in like i, I don't know if they were like off in like the zoo area or like something but they got lost um and yeah we, we filmed that we did a lot of I think I don't know if it was like entourage or some kind of there was like little cameo stuff that we would do there um and film there but yeah it was good times <laughs> um Holly didn't we do a cameo on the red man method man thing yeah, we were like seen exiting the limo with Hef. I remember because that was when the mean girls were still there and we were like sitting in the limo idling in the driveway because we had to like drive up and down and like exit a million times. And Bridget, I remember you were wearing like a random ring and one of the mean girls was like, oh, that's a pretty ring. 
Because remember we were talking about how we think the mean girls thought that Hef didn't know you had been married and separated. And like she was trying to like out you in front of everybody because she thought it was like your wedding ring or something. Yeah, I remember. I didn't remember that that was the lim- that that was why we were in the limo, but I remember shooting the Method Mad Red Mad thing, and I remember the Mean Girls were just like so celebrity starstruck over it, and I just remember thinking, "This is not that big of a deal." <laughs> yeah, you guys were always, from what I remember, um, you guys were always like right by Huff's side, um, whereas that was not the case for the other ladies. So were um, were people always hitting you up to try and get you get? for you to get them into the mansion or on the list or anything like that? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, for sure. Oh, for sure. Um, I'm like, well, you're, if you're not famous or a musician, you can't good luck with that. Um, but (laughs) I go, you can apply like everyone else. Um, but yeah, it was funny. I, a couple, I remember specifically, um, Brody, oh my gosh, Brody Jenner was so funny because he was so young um, and I don't, he, he, I don't know if he didn't know how to get on the mansion list or whatever, but he called me and I got him in and he was with, he was friends with another playmate. Um, I think, I don't, I can't remember who, um, but yeah, he, I, I definitely got him in and I got a couple people that didn't know how to get in, like send your application, send your hot really, so. Talk to Jenny. <laughs> Talk to Jenny. Yep. <laughs> Wait, so Holly has a note on here. Tell us about the boyfriend who picked you up at the end of the night and what he thought of the party. Is that, did we already talk about that or is that a different story? No, we haven't. So yeah, Um, I dated this gentleman, John, who I'm still friends with, um, but dated him for a long time and he picked me up. And one time he was like, somebody let him like, they were like, yeah, you can stay and come and have a drink. And just walked in and was just like jaw on the floor, um, just realizing what that world, like we get so used to it, I think, like thinking that everything there is normal and it's not. And then he was just like, this is what you do. And I'm like, yeah, oh my gosh, it's so fun. Let's go get a drink. I like thinking nothing of it. And yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I didn't keep relationships long. Let's just say that. <laughs> so he was upset about it he should have been like so excited that he got a glimpse of that world for even a second he, yeah he no he was he was excited about it but just didn't want to I think every guy I, I ever like the novelty of dating somebody that does that for a living is there in the beginning and then they want to remove you from that they're like okay cool but like no not anymore right right and you're like well no this is who I am like you should yeah how long did you continue to work for Playboy and do all of this stuff? Yeah, it was 2003, 2004, and 2005. Um, so a good three years um, of like a million parties. I wish I had like count like how many times I was painted, but it was a good three years. Mark might have an account of all of that. Do you still stay in contact with Mark? I do occasionally. I still talk with him, um, but I kind of... I kind of, again, like going into the corporate professional world where that I was kind of shunned for everything, I kind of took a, a step back and became like super private. So unfortunately, I hate that that had to be a thing, um, honestly, but that's, yeah, but I still talk to him. Yeah. What about Kendra? No. Yeah, no. I, that was, I, yeah, that I stopped talking to her like during the end of me being body painted even. I think she started looking at me like as a, an employee of the mansion. For sure. Like, that's kind of what I felt like. So, unspoken. That was really early on then, too, for her. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And so, what are you up to now? You could tell us as much or as little as you want to feel comfortable with. Yeah. So, I'm a mom of three kids, which is crazy. I'm never going to have Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I'm a single mom of three, so long story on that. Um, but it's been just me and them for, for years. I run an insurance company, so I coach, train, and develop leadership within the organization. And um, yeah, I'm also, I was also on women, lead, women in leadership councils and tech councils in the organization, So and growing agencies from state to state. So I've moved around a bit doing that. But yeah, like full-on 
corporate America, two monitors at work, Excel spreadsheets, like you would never think in a million years. <laughs> I did like Playboy at all from like looking at me now. So it's funny, <laughs> kind of. That's great. Who, who you've mentioned a few times that some people like have found out about your past and are negative about it. Can you talk about that at all? Like who are, were those people in the corporate world? Were they like people you were your husband or people you were da- like family type things or? Um, family? No, my immediate family has always been, and, and I thank goodness, super, super supportive of everything that I've ever done. So, um, I know that's not the case for everyone. So I'm, I'm super thankful. I adore my family, but it was, um, just guys I've dated and, um, work related to when I was starting out my career, um, just somebody mentioning it in passing and like looking up pictures of me during work meetings. And when I'm, yeah, when I'm like presenting, um, you know, like to a team and, you know, snickering behind my back and the, the jokes on them because I got promotions and they did not, but that had to be, it was difficult to navigate through that. Um, just in general and then just the relationship thing um i'm i'm single and i i don't i think that like anytime i ever like want to talk about this kind of stuff i like i always i always overshare in general but i always like to talk about what i did because you should like love the whole me and the real me um and then i'll like have a relationship and then i'll talk about it and then it's just like guys recoil from it so um yeah, I think that's just the negative side of it for for some reason. Yeah, that's unfortunate on them. Right? I know. I'm not meeting the right guy. I have a bad picker. So <laughs> you guys can set me up with somebody next. I don't know. Well, Holly, that was the end of our questions. Do you have anything else? I don't think so, unless you have like a best and worst memory of working at mansion parties. I should have asked you ahead of time. I usually ask people that ahead of time, though, so they can think about it. Yeah. Um. I think what, yeah, the best, I don't know. I think the best, I just, I I can't one, one specific party, just like, I loved the Halloween party. They were, the haunted house was like legit scary. (laughs) Going through that thing naked, by the way, and body paint is like, I'm like, oh, (laughs) people grab you. And I'm like, ah, hello. Um, Nice adrenaline shot after that. Um, (laughs) But I, I, I love those. Um, and yeah, like the, the Midsummer Night's Dream, that one was like the most exclusive, but it was just the most well done. Didn't they even have like mermaids in the pool and like. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Like it was like stunning. So I think just, just all of it and wrapped up into one ball of fun. It was, it was a great experience for sure. And something no one else can relate to you. So I'm so happy to reconnect with you guys. <laughs> I'm like, talking about this. I'm like, no, I swear there was mermaids in the pool and everyone was like super fun. And they're like, yeah, Tiffany. Okay. I'm like, no, no, no. I promise. <laughs> I can vouch for that. I can vouch for it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good. Phew, I'm validated. Well, I don't know if everybody was super cool. A lot, most people, there was a, there was a batch of not so cool. Uh, fair. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> yes. But no, it, it's been so great to reconnect to you guys. Cause like I said, I can't, I don't really have anyone else that, that understands or that I can like share, like reminisce with, cause everyone thinks I'm like bananas when I start talking about it. It's funny because on girls next door, they show the same footage of the painted ladies, which is you and Kendra. And then I don't know who all the other people are meeting Hef at his party like so many times in the show like they're constantly re-showing that same photo I'm sure you've seen it a million times yeah yeah like it's on every like yeah yeah when I watched it I was like oh my gosh and I'm like I think I'm saying like happy birthday baby like I like we were like homies and everyone's like oh, who are you really Tiffany like what how do you like, I, told you I do this for a living you're like actually seeing it though it's like wowza <laughs> Yeah. Well, it was so fun reconnecting. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. And you guys are stunning and smart and funny. Oh, thank you. So are you. Thank you. You've always been super kind to me and thank you for everything. So yeah.